Hello everybody, my name is Zathrodok and welcome back to Zathrodok Plays Magic 2015. Uh, last episode we did the first two tutorials, and this episode we'll try and do the last three tutorials, shall we? So let's go ahead and get moving. If you're more interested in the single player campaign stuff, go ahead and skip this video and I'll have them all labeled out for you. Uh, let's see, enchantment are... Uh, enchantments are permanents that represent magical resources. Some enchantments... Man, why can't I say enchantments? Enchantments affect the entire game. Others, called auras, are attached to specific creatures or other cards. I bet we're gonna have a lot of enchantments and auras. For your third quest, white. you'll be using a white deck. White's specialty is amassing an army of small, efficient creatures. Your opponent is Onyx Mage. And the small, efficient creatures get buffed so much. Is that shield bearer? Nope. Glory seeker. You've drawn an enchantment. Woo! Enchantments are powerful spells whose effects are constant as long as it remains on the battlefield. Honor of the Pure, for example, increases the power and toughness of all your white creatures. Pretty sweet. Zero, let's go ahead and do that. White creatures control get plus one plus one. I'll take it. So now I have two three threes. See how your creatures' power and toughness have increased? Now, attack Onyx Mage with your improved also, your honor oh, of the sorry. pure will affect all your creatures as long as it remains on the battlefield. Guess I can't go too quick because then she stops talking. Boop. I'm gonna take you out, Mr. Onyx Mage. Unless you destroy my this thingamajig. So I can attack, which will do three oh, damage. It appears that Onyx Mage but has I'll put die. a stop to your advancing army. If you attack now, the results might not be good. Perhaps waiting might be the best strategy for now. I agree, nice lady. And if he attacks with that, I can block them both and kill it. Commercialize the card. Now you have a chance to take care of this Minotaur problem. Creatures have the ability to block in groups. In this situation, your glory seekers will be able to destroy the Minotaur abomination. But in the process, one of your glory seekers will also die. No. So yeah, you can see that the uh, Minotaur over here has four damage, six health. Rather four attack, six health, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to put both of these into here. It'll kill it, and I'll lose one, like she was saying, because it'll do four, or rather three damage to one, and then one damage to the other. So lock. I still have one. Okay. What is this thing? So it's flying. That's not good. Nightmare's power and toughness are equal to the number of swamps you control. That's definitely not good. You've drawn a special kind of enchantment. Excellent. An aura. While enchantments affect the game globally, auras affect specific things, usually creatures. This one looks especially useful right now. This aura allows you to target any creature on the battlefield. Yep. Sorry, bud. Now that the nightmare has been pacified, it's time to renew your attack. Attack! If he doesn't pull anything on next turn, I will be able to finish him the following turn. Onyx Mage has cast an aura on your Glory Seeker. The effect leaves it as a 1 1 creature. This is nonsense. Minus 2, minus 2, okay. And then this is. just a creature. Alright then. Let's hope I get another enchantment. 
Night Guard Patrol has some special abilities. Zoom in on it to learn more. Oh, Vigilance and First Strike, how nice you are. First Strike and Vigilance. Oh, no, it's gonna tell First Strike means the Night Guard Patrol will deal damage before creatures with without First Strike. This lets them kill an opposing creature before Night Guard Patrol has dealt any damage. Vigilance means the Night Guard Patrol doesn't tap when it attacks, which means it can also block during your opponent's following turn. Vigilance is super nice. First Strike is super nicer. Both of them, it's way awesome. So... Yeah, you're gonna be played. Oh, I think it's plus one, plus one, so it's a three, two. Um... Let's not attack, because I'm not going to gain anything. Skip. And we're going to attack with this. Hmm, yep, yeah, just that one, because he's not going to block it. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah, he has to. I thought he had four health. So, as you can see, first strike, I take no damage, and I killed it off. And on my next turn, it'll still be like that, ready to block. More land. Now swing in for the win. Poof. Poof. Not that I need that extra one, but why not? What is this question mark thing? As you play more magic, remember that enchantments can help you win the game, either by improving your creatures, removing your opponent's creatures, or other cool effects. In Quest 4, we'll learn some tricky spells and interactions. Sounds good. Tutorial 4, we go. Mastering the stack. stack is where every spell waits for the other player to respond to it. Instead, or I'm sorry, instant spells take advantage of the stack for surprising tricks like dealing damage, buffing creatures, or even countering an opponent's spell. So this will probably go more into the, um, when you're looking at the, the turn phases, you see that little, like, slider go, uh, to show, I think it's like two or three seconds. During that period of time, you can play instant spells, which is why there is that little time period. So I'm sure we're gonna go over it. For your fourth quest, you'll be using a blue deck. Blue's specialty is disrupting its opponent's plans, drawing cards, and using difficult to block creatures. Your opponent is Jade Mage. I hate playing against blue decks. Alright. So, what's going on, tutorial fella? Jade Mage uh -oh. cast an instant. Instants work just like sorceries. They apply immediately to the game and are then discarded, except they can be played at any time. This spell makes her rumbling Bayloth larger, but only until the end of the turn. Yep, so plus three plus three, which means I have to block it out. I guess I did have to before because it was four four. Goodbye, air elemental. You will be missed. I hardly knew you. Block, please. That was kind of a silly move on their part, because I would have died anyway. Oh, it's just so it would survive. You've drawn Ooh. Cancel, a spell that counters another one. Countering stops a spell from happening. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, like summoning a creature, you can respond to it with an instant like Cancel. If you counter your opponent's spell, it will go to their graveyard, and the mana they used is still spent. Yeah, counter super, super nice. Which is part of the reason I hate playing against blue decks. If you yes. attack now, you'll be in danger of losing the game. So we're gonna better skip. not attack until you have better choices. Nothing is as bad as just trying to play like your best creature in your deck. You're so excited, and then they counter okay. it. Okay, now Jade Mage has cast another giant growth. But instead of letting it make her rumbling Bayloth bigger, you can respond by pausing the action and casting cancel. See, in duels you can stop the timer by pressing the spacebar or click the stop 
uh, time button. This would give you, yeah, this would give you some more time to think about what to do next. So I prefer using the space bar because hitting the space bar is way faster than going over here and then making sure that you click on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Pause. Get out of here. Now you've cast a spell, cancel, targeting Jade Mage's spell, Giant Growth. This zone, where spells live before they resolve, is called the stack. Every player can add more instants or abilities to the stack in the same way. So I want to mention that you can keep adding things to the, the, the stack. Think about it like this. Uh, you, I play a cancel card. My opponent plays something else, like another cancel card or something like that. So you use the, the card on the top of the stack first to affect the card below it. So theoretically, he could have countered my counter and then nothing would have happened to his uh, giant growth down here. So that's why it's referred to as a stack, because you're basically stacking whatever's going to happen. So, oh, I don't want to skip blocking. <laughs> Block. Trade, which means next turn. I don't have to worry about that as much. What do we got? That's trampled. That's bad. You've drawn Archaeomancer, a creature with a triggered ability. That means when something specific happens, this card will automatically do something special. Many creatures have a triggered ability when they enter the battlefield. Archaeomancer, for example, will retrieve an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Excellent. So I was mentioning trample. We're probably going to go over it because why not? But, uh, if a creature with trample would deal enough combat damage to its blockers to destroy them, it deals the rest of its damage to the defending player. So that means if I were to block this with like a 2-2 a two -two creature, there'd be two damage left over from the four, which would then go into basically me as the wizard. So I need to block with four uh, armor points or health points or whatever you want to call it to basically counteract the four damage. So, but we're going to play this and I'm sure oh, I'm going to be able to get one of them. So I'm going to end up needing to use this to take care of two of the damage, which will leave me at two health. So we'll see what happens. And I've just enough mana to do this. Normally, blocking creatures take all the damage from the attacking creature. But if a creature with trample is blocked, it will see, deal enough damage to that. kill the blocking creature and deal its remaining damage to the defending player. It's like I knew. So I have to block, otherwise I'll lose. But it's still going to deal 2 damage to me. Unless you stop the timer to counter this spell, the Duskdale Worm will probably kill you. And that's where we hit spacebar. Duskdale Worm, trample, 7-7. Seven, seven. This is what I was talking about with the first time I canceled one. It's like, oh, this is a really sweet creature. I'm so excited to put it out. I'm gonna cancel this and it's gonna go away and it's really gonna piss people off. So get out of here. Destroy two cards. That's gonna be handy. And... Oh. See, I read that wrong. It says, draw two cards, not destroy two cards. Oops. But this is still working. So, uh, Ether Adept, uh, enters the battlefield, return target creature to its owner's hand. So I'll be doing that to that thing. Uh, and then switcheroo, exchange control of two target creatures. So that's gonna go out. Get rid of that. 
so that he can't attack next turn. Ooh, big fella. Fantastic, Switcheroo is sure to turn the tide in your favor. Casting allows you to swap one of your creatures for one of your opponents. Cast Switcheroo and play uh, and swap your Aether Adept for Primordial Hydra. So Primordial Hydra, as you can see, uh, enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one plus one counters on Primordial Hydra. Primordial Hydra has trample as long as it has ten or more plus one plus one counters on it. So, uh, the X that you see here, basically it's saying to summon this, it requires two forest mana, and then you can put an unlimited number of mana to pay for the X. So for each X, it gets the plus one, plus one. So it added, uh, they played the two forest and then seven additional land to give it a seven, seven. That card gets real mean real fast. As you can see, blue decks are kind of a bunch of jerks. And upkeep. Boom! 14. Sure, why not? Let's go ahead and kill him. So now that it has more than 10, as I was reading on the card, it now has trample. So technically it will do 14, but if it blocks with the 2-2, two -two, it'll still do 12 and it'll win. Victory for me. Instants are powerful ways to surprise your opponents or thwart their plans. Practice using the stack with tricks like Giant Growth, Cancel, and others. In Quest 5, we'll suit up interesting creatures with equipment. Oh, I think that means we'll be playing a white deck. Maybe an artifact deck. Here we go. Many cards in Magic have special abilities even after they're cast. Some permanents have abilities you can activate, while others have abilities that trigger when certain conditions are met. I'm gonna vote we're probably gonna play an artifact deck. For your final quest, you'll be using a red deck. Aww. Red's specialty is aggressive, quick creatures with interesting abilities. Your opponent is Alabaster Mage. Red also focuses on direct damage spells. That Alabaster Mage. So he's got a flying 2-1 out right now, which I can't do anything against. Thank you. What is this? Whenever you cast a white spell or planes enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one health or one life. That sucks. For me. You've drawn Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature with an activated ability. That means this creature allows you to take an action, pay a cost, and then this creature does something, an effect. For example, Excellent. Prodigal Pyromancer allows you to tap it, and if you do, it deals one damage to a creature or player of your choice. I like this card. Like that. Just like attacking, abilities that require a tap, like Prodigal Pyromancers, can't be activated while a creature is summoning sick. Which kind of sucks, but works out well. So next turn, he'll attack, I can't block, but I'll be able to tap this and deal one damage to, uh, this flying buddy there, take it out. Alabaster Mage has cast an equipment. It usually improves a creature. Casting an equipment spell only puts it on the battlefield. To attach or reattach it, you need to pay its equip cost. Equipment remains on the battlefield even if the creature leaves. Yes, equipment is awesome. So you can, well, so he's gonna attach it. If he had another creature, he could then reattach it to something else. He's probably gonna attack. If he can't do anything, so. 
So it's one health, so that's very important. Or one toughness on the creature. Four damage from the attack because Bone Splitter increases the equipped creature's power by two. So what you could have done, so... Say you had another creature out that you weren't attacking with. You could then, after that combat phase, pay another one uh, mana to then move the axe from this creature to the one that you're potentially blocking with. So that next turn when your opponent attacks, you can do that much more damage. Uh, so it says, now the Prodigal Pyromancer are no longer a summoning sickness, you can activate its ability, uh, or yeah, you can activate its ability, you can tap it to deal one damage to a creature or player of your choice. Yes, please. Activate. Creatures. That guy. Unlike oh auras, if a creature with an attached equipment leaves the battlefield, the equipment remains, ready to be reattached for the same equip cost. Which is why equipment is so awesome. Like equipment, there are many artifact cards in Magic. Artifacts are usually colorless. This means that any color of mana may be used to cast them. Even some creatures are artifacts. Anything that affects artifacts can affect artifact creatures as well. Alright, so let's see what he got. Gargoyle Sentinel. Why can't I zoom in? Fine. There we go. Defender! Pay three until the end of turn. Gar Gargoyle Sentinel loses Defender and gains flying. So for this, flying. Yep, yep, we know. Defender! Creatures with Defender, defender can't attack. So, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, creatures that are considered walls. They usually have defender on it. They'll, they might not have any damage or very low damage, but they usually have a very high toughness. So, uh, those are usually ones that you'll see with defender on it, but this one's kind of cool. So, you can pay three to make it a flying creature that can then attack. You drew Torch Fiend. It has an activated ability that doesn't require tapping. These can be used even when a creature is summoning sick. Torch Fiend's ability requires you to sacrifice it, put it in your graveyard, to get the effect. And we're gonna do just that. So play this. We're gonna zoom in. Sacrifice it. To destroy this artifact creature. I could have tapped it to deal a damage, but I can also just do that. Which is dangerous if you had things out or had a card like destroy target attack or something like that, so. But we survived. What are them angels? So flying and vigilance. Wheel sucking for me. But I'm sure I'll find a way out of it. Dragon Hatchling. Its activated ability costs one red mana. All activated abilities may be used as many times as you can pay the cost. Be careful, the ability only lasts until the end of the turn. So what we're gonna do with this... Oh, abilities can be used as many times as you can pay for the cost. Unlike Prodigal Pyromancer ability, you do not need to tap the Dragon Hatchling to activate its ability. So you can activate it as many times as you have red mana. So we're gonna play this. And then next turn during the combat. Fine, I didn't want to tap this to deal one damage. So during this combat phase, it's going to attack. I'm going to block. And we will do fine. Oh, because I had to hit stop time. My bad. So I can do this. Activate my ability five times. And then... Now I can block. Block, please. And a fair trade for me. Uh, let's see. 
on planes and tap to tap target creature. So that's really nice if your opponent has big, beefy, terrible things and you're trying to attack through a block. Meaning, uh, on his turn, if I had a huge creature over here and he had something that dealt 3 damage, so he basically just needed to deal the 3 damage, uh, he could use this to tap my big, scary creature and then go in for the kill. So let's see. Uh, Searing Spear deals 3 damage to target creature or player. Alright then. So, some instants allow you to target creatures or player. I cast Standing Spear to deal 3 damage to your opponent's uh, Blinding Mage. So, I want to get rid of this guy. Creature. That thing. She takes me out of potential death next turn. And I can tap this guy. Take some damage. Take that, jerk! damage. Four turns, I'll have you beat. So, he gets health because he played a plane, it's because of uh, this thing. You drew Volcanic Dragon. It has haste. This means it's not affected by summoning sickness. Time to die, Alabaster Mage! Interesting tools that can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Use them wisely. Only because you told me to. Tutorial menu, so I think that was the last one. Congratulations, you've proven yourself worthy to be or to wield a deck of your own. I'm can't read. Choose carefully before taking on your next opponent. So, let's see, white, white magic lays down the law, protecting and defending its allies, white magic, er, white mages call on soldiers, knights, and even angels. For them, honor and light are shields and swords. So, white decks are gonna have the ones with your, uh, your equipments, uh, at least, again, in my experience. They have a lot of equipment cards, uh, and flying, so the damage, er, the beefiness of the creatures is usually a little bit lower. Um, oh, and they, they use auras a lot. So, I like to lean towards white decks, but I also have blue. Blue magic is about air, water, and things of the mind. Blue mages use their vast knowledge and quick reactions to control the battlefield and gain the upper hand. Um, you guys saw the blue deck. I mean, it's full of counters, it's a lot of sorcery spells, it's spells, all that kind of stuff. And it's really just there to mess with your opponents and really turn the turn the battle in your favor through spells. Uh, black magic enslaves and corrupts. Black man prayer mages wield spells of death and darkness to satisfy their desire for power. They will do whatever it takes to win. So black decks use a lot of like vampires and ghouls and zombies and all that kind of stuff. Um, they specialize a lot in like death touch, life link. Uh, and yeah, they, they have a lot of just direct damage um, to creatures, so just instantly killing off creatures with black decks is really nice. And then red, uh, red magic embodies fire and lightning, passion and fury. Mages who wield it are quick to act and quick to anger, smashing and burning their way to victory. So red decks are usually smaller creatures... Um, that cost very little or slightly beefier creatures with like haste or you know that kind of stuff going on so they've got a couple flying they have a lot of dragons and stuff like that um, but you're gonna find a lot of just direct damage spells so fireballs lightning strikes all that kind of stuff uh, to basically one shot creatures or dealing heavy damage to uh, your opponent so they're really nice and their decks are usually pretty quick meaning um, it can 
help you take ward control fairly early on if you get some of those sorcery spells. And then green. Green magic is all about tooth and claw ferocity. Green mages revere life, growth, and brute force of nature. They summon huge creatures to do their bidding. So green is going to have the biggest creatures, meaning they will have the most attack and toughness. Uh, they get some sorcery spells, I think like, uh, you know, that giant growth thing where it's uh, one shot, you know, plus three, plus three increases um, the creature for that turn. Uh, they, all, they have less of the control aspect. I want to see they might have some auras, but they do a lot of, like, um, like, play this card to draw something on your deck, so that kind of helps because their creatures are a lot beefier, so if you have some of the really big creatures in there and you want to get it out of the deck as quick as possible so you can play it, um, that's really helpful, but hands down, biggest creatures are going to be in the green decks. Um, I am partial to white and red. Red's easier, but white's more interesting, meaning I can get the, uh, the armors and all that kind of stuff to buff the dudes, whereas red is just direct damage. Red will be a lot easier, but I'm gonna go play. Choose your color. Choose your starting deck. Keep the call. Flood the battlefield with an army of green and white creatures, then cast spells that boost them all to generate a powerful attack. Uh, slowly take control of the battlefield with white defensive creatures and spells, then win the air, or win in the air with blue flying attackers. Speedily grow in power, draining life from your opponent, torturing them with black spells white, while sustaining yourself with white spells. And then, yeah, white red. That's what I like to do. Assault your opponent early using a swarm of red creatures, then enhance them with white auras to punch through their defenses. So I wonder if the red deck actually has. have the same guy so uh reds stealing spells and creatures that feel sacrificing with black spells um enemy stampede large red creatures some quickly using green spells that provide more lands that's probably gonna be real good well, let's keep going uh blaze a path for your quick red creatures using inexpensive blue spells your opponent will never see the onslaught coming and then yeah this is the same guy so red white that's probably what i'm gonna go with but, in the 2012 version of Magic, wait, yeah, there was a blue deck that was, I think it was a blue-green deck that was murderous. Huge creatures, and it was just all about getting your, your mana back real quick, so let me take a look and see that. Uh, Explain your choices to deploy your opponent's plans with destructive blue spells, and neutralize every oncoming threat with black removal spells. Uh, blue bounce effects continuously reuse green creatures with enter the battlefield abilities to gain huge advantage. That's my cool. And this is yeah, so same thing as we saw before. So it doesn't look like they have the blue one that I was hoping for, but that's probably a good thing because it was really OP. So I'm gonna go white red. So my tutorial is done. And I can reset my colors. So there you go, guys. That's the tutorial. That's getting started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start up the campaign mode, the single player. And if you guys want to watch that, uh, see my next video. It should be single player. I can't tell the future, but that's what I'm planning on doing. So there's a good chance. Uh, and yeah, I'll go through the campaign. Uh, you'll see how I take out some of the enemies and if this is anything like the other magic games there will be puzzles and stuff so um, i'll be doing all that in later episodes so if you guys have liked these episodes please feel free to like favorite and subscribe super helpful to me um and it'll you know if you need to watch the tutorials again you can always go to your favorites and click it and bring it back Anyways, um, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. And I hope I catch you all in the next episode of Sound Rock Plays. See ya. Huh. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no.